Damn it. I am so happy those didn't fall over. On December 20th of 2019, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker was released. I actually saw the movie Friday night with my roommate and we filmed a review a week after. We never released the review. There were a number of reasons why. Uh, it all had to do with me specifically. Uh, one of the main reasons was at the time when we were filming and living together in December, uh, I was working at a Disney store and it just felt really weird like making a review and talking negatively of this film especially this huge franchise and at the same time working for this company that made this film and you know they were paying me at the time so I, it just felt really weird and i wanted to be respectful for the people who were you know giving me employment and then youtube had the whole cop situation that happened back in december and i was scared of just posting anything i didn't really know the laws the regulations or the updates for the YouTube policy. So I, I just took a step back from YouTube for a while um, and I was focusing on my own small business for videography and photography. And that seemed to be working just fine in January. Around that time, I actually quit the Disney store and I was focused on that. And I still had intentions of going back on YouTube, but it was looking apparent that I was gonna be focusing more on this small business. <laughs> then the coronavirus happened and uh, a lot of us are unemployed. I am freelance, but unfortunately, people aren't wanting to get married around this time. I had a lot of gigs that were planned for March, and those gigs were canceled because they, you know, brides and grooms were canceling their weddings, so I had nothing really to do in terms of my small business. That being said, I'm taking the necessary precautions to make sure that I'm safe, I'm quarantining myself. I go out sometimes, but that's just only if I need to go to the grocery store, or get food, it's, it's not for any social gatherings at all. Um, I'm very hesitant as to having people over because of this whole ordeal, uh, but that's besides the point. I'll probably make like a video in the near future updating you guys on the coronavirus. Let's, let's talk about Star Wars. Because of this ordeal that's happening in our country right now, I had time to finish the video. This is a full in-depth review to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I filmed it with Michelangelo a week after the film was released, so this was in December. Uh, this was right after Christmas. And that's another reason why I was hesitant on posting a review to Star Wars is because I felt embarrassed that like it was a week after and we, we didn't cover this like on the weekend of and I, I knew it wasn't going to perform well. So, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't really care about that kind of stuff anymore. I just, I love talking about films. And I just want to showcase to you guys what we thought of the film within the month that we saw the film. So yeah, uh, this video that you're about to see is from December 2019. We talked generally of how we feel about the film in the beginning, and I understand that the film has been out for a while, so I'm just gonna go ahead and provide a time code right here and in the comments, so if you just wanna go ahead and skip to those spoilers of Star Wars Episode Nine, you can go ahead and do that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you an explanation as to why this review is so late. I just figured I'd wait for the movie to come out on Blu-ray to gain some type of relevancy. And yeah, here is my Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker review on the Pixel Talk channel. I should have brought in my slate. Actually, I have a slate now. Yeah, right. we both do. What's going on, guys? It is Corbin Stuckey of Pixel Talk here. I am joined by Michael Walker, aka Michelangelo. And today we are finally talking about Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Um, we are really sorry that it took us this long to make this video. Uh, we actually saw it uh, Friday night, but then we had work, then we had to go see our families for Christmas, and we're finally just getting in the process of making this video review. Um, and there was a lot of other factors that were in play as well. Uh, this was kind of the first time where I was talking to Michael about it. This was the first time where we saw a Star Wars movie and we didn't really have like um, necessity to really talk about it immediately or, or see it immediately. Wouldn't you agree? Like this was yeah, the first time it didn't feel immediate. We even, for The Last Jedi, it was the moment that we could see it, we did yeah. and went and saw it, you know, because uh, these releases used to be kind of held to a higher standard 
uh, you know, like an Avengers release or uh, some Marvel movies that have a lot of buzz to them. Uh, and then The Last Jedi happened. I think kind of that that sense of urgency died off a little bit. It kept going whenever they released Solo. Right. That didn't sell as well. I personally didn't even see that in theaters at all. Really? Yeah. Okay. So there, there's um, kind of that, that feeling towards it. But we were like, we're going to definitely get around to it because it's oh, yeah. one of the saga the, right. The episodic. And especially parts. with the amount of like criticisms that this movie has had. Like this movie in terms of like its ratings on Rotten Tomatoes is getting more headlines than just the movie itself. Like Damn. is is crazy. And we're definitely gonna be talking about that. As always, we're gonna be talking about what we generally feel about the film. Uh, and then once we get into spoilers, we'll let you know because we know that some people still haven't seen the movie yet, which is totally fine. Uh, but yes, we'll just basically be going into non-spoilers for just a few minutes, and then we'll let you know when we go into spoilers. Um, so, like I said, I didn't really feel it all, like an immediate necessity to see this film, and I feel as though it was because of not necessarily The Last Jedi, but just Star Wars as like a franchise has been really boosted since 2015, yeah. especially with the spinoff films. Um, it just feels like Star Wars isn't necessarily special anymore because we get one yearly now. Mm. Um, and then we have the theme park at Disney World. And it just seems like Star Wars, you know, when a Star Wars movie came out, there was like a three year gap. When you had the first one, that was 1977. Then you had The Empire Strikes Back, which was 1980. And then you had The Return of the Jedi, which was 1983. There was an immediate reaction to want to see The Return of the Jedi after the events of Empire right. Strikes Back. You wanted to see what occurred, and I can't imagine what it was like for those people well, to have like that three-year gap. And they're still doing that, though, because, I mean, th just to say, like, oh, yeah, well, this happened in 1983. I mean, look at how it was for Avengers Endgame, you know, and that was a much uh, longer-running saga. I think it was in part to how the uh, franchise was handled. Right. You know, because, like, I was still super urgent, watched Avengers Endgame opening night with, like, eight of my buddies. Right. Yeah, they're doing it with other films as well. I'm just saying, like, it. they're not really doing it with Star Wars. Like, you right. don't feel, like... There's questions that no, you I want... Agree. Yeah, there's questions that you want answered in terms of, like, what you saw in The Last Jedi, but because of how the film like people reacted to it mm -hmm. it was like okay well i'll go see this film just to see like those questions i did not hate the last jedi i thought it was actually pretty well done i think it questioned things like in terms of the star wars universe and asked a lot of questions that a lot of fans didn't really like ask at that time yeah um but it is not a film that i would watch repeatedly right. i've only seen it three times and that was like during my time at the movie theater i do own the movie but i don't even think i've opened it yet um so yeah i just the Last Jedi, I don't hate it. Um, there are scenes where I do feel are very unnecessary, like Finn's storyline and yeah. Rose. Those that are scenes that I do not like. Yeah, well, because, and that's another thing too that many people are talking about is like, well, was there a clear idea set with JJ, with Ryan, where they're both on the same page, they know that they're gonna take certain characters these directions. You right. Know what I mean, because JJ sets up a certain character and probably along with all the other producers and people coming up with these characters. And then, you know, they have a certain thing and then Ryan kind of takes that and it's like, that that's what how I'd like to describe The Last Jedi, is like a gotcha movie. Right? Yeah, like, it's boom. there was obviously, even judging from this film, and I'm not even just talking about like um, The Rise of Skywalker, I'm talking about like this sequel trilogy. There was not proper communication. It seems like they kind of winged it every sequel or so. Yeah. The, with the Marvel movies, I, I hate that we're referencing Marvel movies like frequently on this review but with the Marvel movies there was obviously like a plan Kevin, Fe Kevin Feige knew that there had to be like this layout before they can make these movies and that's why it worked because you have all these different movies you have all these different characters that are eventually going to meet up and mm -hmm. you have to make sure that there is consistencies and you know they can um, reference the past and like yeah. make sure, making sure they're not retconning and anything build off of their previous stuff you know? exactly in, in this sequel trilogy, it doesn't really feel like there was a plan. It seemed like they were winging it. Let me state how I feel about The Rise of Skywalker, and you can tell me if you agree. Okay. The movie's not bad. In a sense, the movie works. Uh, it does not deserve the amount of hate that it's getting on Rotten Tomatoes. 
if you see from the users, the, you, it's, it's a polar opposite of what The Last Jedi was. Critics yeah. love The Last Jedi, users hated The Last Jedi. Mm. Critics don't really like The Rise of Skywalker, and users are actually really liking it. Yeah. Um, there are things that... Let me, let me think about how I want to describe this. Whenever I'm doing a movie review, um, I usually say either the movie was good, or mm -hmm. the movie was bad, or the movie was good, it has this amount of nitpicks. Yeah. With The Rise of Skywalker, there is a shit ton of nitpicks. Oh yeah. There is a ton. There is a ton. Um, and here's the thing though, is that's, it builds into that, right? So like, we had to answer things <clears throat> from, and you were touching on this earlier, how you're like, I mean, I'm gonna see this to get the answers, you know, from The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. And so it was spending all this time uh, doing that, it couldn't grow as its own movie, and it, and in some ways it did, which uh, was good, and I like some of those scenes, which we'll get to later, right. and spoilers and stuff, um, but in a lot of the ways, I think it was held back by that. Right. And uh, so... I think this is a, is a good send-off movie. I think it has the, the message that it's trying to present. It actually does a little bit successfully. Um... I just feel as though, I don't know, it, it, it definitely seems like a movie that is trying to fix the um, criticisms of The Last Jedi, for sure. Yeah. Um, which, I was actually very excited that J.J. Abrams was returning for this. Like, he's mm -hmm. one of my favorite directors, and I feel as though he should have helmed all the movies. And it seems like, in this scenario specifically, it seems like Ryan Johnson made this movie, and then J.J. Abrams was like, oh, well... I have to correct this because a lot of people are yeah. like really not liking where this universe is going and this movie feels like a correction it's actually like it, it's so i was thinking about this today like people were really critiquing ryan johnson because he is the director usually when you are a director of a film and the film is bad all the blame goes to like the director right in this situation, no one's really talking about J.J. Abrams. They're talking about the movie itself. And I find that really interesting because I think everyone has this understanding of, like, he did his best. Yeah. Like, no one is pointing fingers at J.J. really. That's actually true. And you got to give him a lot of credit, man. Right. Because that was the thing. was There was so much backlash. Like, literally 50-50 in the entire fandom. Right. Like versus dis didn't like The Last Jedi. And uh, it's like, how do you, so what do you go with? What do you not go with? And uh, it was interesting. We'll talk, we'll get more into it in spoilers because there was these moments where it was like, oh, this had happened in Last Jedi. Oh, but this is like what really happened. Right. And then it's, you know, so things end up changing. Uh, some things are retconning, but you don't feel like it was completely thrown out the window. Like they didn't just rewrite it. Um, I feel like he wanted to. Right. He, they, there's a lot of stuff in this movie. Uh, there's so much back and forth and going in this place. I mean, there's, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to it in a second. A lot of, like, I was actually talking to a buddy of mine last night and he said that this movie is a lot like Return of the Jedi. And I will agree with him. And it's not because this is the third film in this trilogy. It's because even though the, the Return of the Jedi, like, was received positively, there are some nitpicks that people will point out to this day. Yeah. Um, people love that movie, and people will watch that movie. They think it's very entertaining. But there's a ton of nitpicks, like Maybe for they example, like don't like the Ewoks. E exactly, the Ewoks taking over and helping win the war against the Empire. That's yeah. so improbable. Like that is no that that right. it just doesn't seem very likely. But people still like that movie. Yeah. Whereas we live in a time now where it's good for we, toys, guys. Yeah. Like, duh. We live in a time now, though, this isn't the 80s, and a lot of things yeah. that, like... What the hell was that? Oh, it's the, yeah, it's the water heater. Oh, okay. We live in a time now where this isn't the 80s, and we're able to look things more precisely. Yeah. And we don't see push... See what they are. Yeah, we don't push things aside anymore. If we see a nitpick or a negative, we're going to point that out. Yeah. For sure. So, with that being said, can we go into spoilers territory, or do you want to talk more about... Um, stuff is he what do you think else could let, be let me about? let me give my statement and then we can go into spoilers okay. um i think this is a fine star wars film there are a ton of nitpicks for sure um but i don't hate it um there are just things that don't make sense visually and intelligently and yeah. I know that seems like I'm Logic, really like logically, logically, yeah. It, I, I I know it seems like I'm already bashing on this film, but 
the film overall, in terms of an emotional standpoint and the characters that we've received thus far in this film mm -hmm. trilogy, <clears throat> I, I really liked where they ended. And I like the message that the film tries to give. The nitpicks that I have are the logic behind some of the events that take place in the film mm -hmm. and the new characters. I don't give a shit about any of the new characters. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, let's go ahead and get into spoilers. If you want to give your thoughts, um, statement yeah, before um, we do that. I mean, I still, yeah, and I, I, I know I've kind of brought up some nuanced points that could be like, oh, that's good or bad. Uh, I did like the movie, I but I that's the thing I liked it. Yeah. I didn't love it. I didn't think it was great. I don't need to see it again. I well I and I will see it again just to kind of get like a, so you know exactly your thoughts and your feelings on it because you know when I revisited the last Jedi I was like you know what yeah you know I I I can I feel like my critiques and other people's critiques are super validated and uh, I would definitely watch it again. And maybe I'll come to find like, okay, I do like that. I actually do like that part more or less than when I originally thought. But I, I like the film. And I've even said this, I'll give it probably like a 7.5 out of 10. That's fair. Yeah, like I, I thought this deserved like a 70% Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know why it's like this low, but okay, let's go ahead and get spoilers. Let's do it. Um, okay, so I'm so happy that we can talk about this now. <laughs> um, so essentially like one of the main things that I don't like about this film is that it seems like this has all been leading up to something and like, you know, kind of Ray's origins and stuff like that. And we'll get into that for sure. Mm -hmm. But even in the text crawl of this film, it seems like they're just giving us stuff without any payoff whatsoever. Yeah. Immediately in the text crawl, they say that the Emperor is back. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though that is one of the things like I'm, I'm talking about. They're just giving us stuff and there's no payoff. There, there's no like yeah. surprise or anything like that. Uh, I would have rather have just kind of in the film as we're, you know, with these characters, they discover that Palpatine is back. I know it's in the trailer, but I'm talking about like mm. within the film itself, like I would have liked to see like this be like a reveal of some sorts. Yeah, instead of just kind of, cause, and that's the thing is show don't tell, right? Yeah. They're telling us about where they are now. And that's, that's typical in Star Wars movies. You know, they're always in these different spots, maybe years have gone by or whatever. But that's like a huge thing. Yeah, exactly. That's it's like big thing. the Emperor's back. What the hell? Like, oh, like, oh. That's how we're starting it off. Yeah, and I feel as though maybe they put that in in there is because they thought that the text crawl for the Last Jedi was super underwhelming. That's like, true too. Like the first, like the Force Awakens, they say like Luke Skywalker is missing. It's like, oh my god, you sense you have this like sense of urgency. Yeah. Whereas the Last Jedi, it's like, okay, it, it's literally just like you know after we're flying the through Force space. Awakens. And they're what can we do to make this text crawl more interesting? Harrowing, Palpatine is back. Harrowing escape. Exactly. And, yeah. So um. All those things. Yeah, and I, I just didn't like the text crawl, or not necessarily like it per se. I just wish I would have seen it. I wish I would have seen it for sure. Um, this has been kind of an argument many, many years now. Like, do we even need text crawls in Star Wars films? It's more of a traditional thing. That yeah, we have. It's a style. Now. It's like yeah. a style. It's like you can't have a Star Wars film without a text crawl. Yeah. Um, and now we actually go forth into the characters and we see that, you know, Poe and Finn are trying to get in contact with a spy. They're trying to get information right. regarding the Emperor and stuff like that. And we see Rey training on this planet. Something I also want to talk about too. Um, why is the lightsaber intact? Oh my god, yes. Yeah. We freaking. I remember talking about that when we had left the theater and it was like wait so they just kind of that was a hundred percent retconned i'm not saying that like you can't fix a lightsaber yeah but that thing was like at least have it damaged well, in it, the movie because it right and because it makes sense for whenever luke shows up as his force projection at the end mm -hmm. of last jedi to have it intact even though it had been broken in the scene before, because he's a force projection and he can kind of control that. Right, but exactly. Like, but it's like now it's in the flesh, just completely like fine. Yeah, exactly. I, I just which was weird. It felt because in the Last Jedi, they the made shot a big deal about it. Too. Yeah, it's like the shot pertains like like we are gonna lose. Like you know, this First Order is we don't have a chance. We don't even have a lightsaber. That was the significance of that scene. And it's like, oh, it's fine. We yeah. fixed it. It's like. You can't easily fix a lightsaber. I think it was even missing a crystal. It's got the crystal in the like, middle of it. Exactly. Powers the whole thing. I don't know if that was 
I don't know about like lightsaber. Like it was a big effect when this thing exploded. Yeah, like the crystal was it done. Dead. Yeah. Done. Um, one of the things that I was looking forward to specifically with the rise of Skywalker, this was the first time that we were going to be seeing this these three people, these trio together, like you know, Ray, yeah. Finn, you know, and Poe. The first thing that we see with them, and it never like it's never acknowledged again. They're arguing and it's not really creative dialogue it's just they're arguing like why'd you like boost my ship up to light speed what why is my robot bb-8 like damage it's like falcon's a lot better shape than he is bb-8's not on fire the what's whole... left of him isn't on fire tell me what happened you tell me first you know what you are what you're difficult really difficult you dropped a tree on him you blew both subble to well, you know what maybe guys. you should have been out there with you us you know i want to be yeah it, it's just like we have this these I arguments happening. yeah we have these arguments happening in the film and it could we, I mean, like, sure, it's like, like, do they hate each other? Yeah, and you know, I was thinking I about care? this. <laughs> like, we have these arguments, like, in the beginning of the film, and it never is acknowledged, like, again throughout the film. Like, maybe even make that a, a side plot, like, oh, these they're having a hard time working together. But if mm. you think about it, I was actually I, I thought about this last night. That is the only interaction that Ray and Poe have in the film is that argument. It, they might have interacted wow. again after that point, but I can't think of anything that stood out besides that first argument in the beginning of the film. Yeah, they kind of... It's uh, almost like Rey is on her quest, and they're kind of like the side characters that you hire. Yeah. In, like Skyrim, you walk up in, in one of the bars or something, and you kind of like, hey, I need to hire your services. And they're following her around, and she's doing all these funny things, like, uh, you know, she force... She does the uh, that was Jedi great. mind trick, and they're, and they're like, have they, has she been doing that to us? It's like, yeah, probably. And then, uh, what was the other ones that they did too, where, uh, she's like, she's like shooting at him and driving the dang speeder in the desert or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, and then they freaking hit the jetpacks. And Finn's like, they fly now. They fly. That is like, everyone's, everyone's been referencing that. Say, they fly now. Oh, they fly now. They fly now. They fly now! They fly now! They, didn't they fly <laughs> Like, everyone's like, I mean, I don't have a problem with like they're being human. Worst line in movie history. It's not fucking funny. <laughs> it's just stupid and quippy. <laughs> this isn't Spider-Man. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, okay, so let's <laughs> let's talk about this too. Um Leia's scenes in the movie. So it's obvious from The Last Jedi. After seeing The Last Jedi, yeah. I immediately was like, okay, I know what they're doing. She was barely in The Last Jedi. She was in a coma in that film. And the reason why she was in a coma was because they were saving her footage for uh, this movie. Mm. Um, there is dialogue that works, but if you analyze the film trying to nitpick and look for what was used from The yeah. Last Jedi, you are you can immediately say like, okay, that's from The Last Jedi. There's literally a scene or the where- Or Force Awakens. Yeah, maybe. There's literally a scene where Rey is talking to um, Leia and saying like, hey, I need to go get these like Sith yeah. objects to find Palpatine. And she's, she's like, no. And it just feels like then, so unnatural. And then the thing is, even building on that is Ray just carries that whole scene. Yeah, it's like, like she'll, saying, she'll, she explains this like pretty elaborate, like, Ex, uh, expos exposition and uh, like you said Lane's just like no and then she's like yeah. it's okay if you feel this way about me exactly. doing this Yo, but okay. I'm doing but it's so something that you would do this is, what I, this is like, what I thought of so there are these videos on YouTube and it's this guy literally talking to his cat and when the cat meows it says like yes no or one like word statements yeah, and then so the guy good. carries on the conversation by giving in-depth sentences and everything so what she just won't leave? no Kitty, we talked about this. Didn't I tell you not to invite random kitty cats into the house? Yeah. <sighs> All right, I will help you this one time, but you have to promise me, Sylvester, this is the last time that you get on Tinder, okay? Okay. All right. It's immediately, like, when I saw that, I was like, it's just like those cat videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, dude, like, yeah, so. Yeah, well, it, it definitely does, is that vibe, 100%. Yeah. Um, but that, that being said, they did, as best they could, man. Cause like, they really did. And God rest her soul, because I wish she could have seen this saga kind of go its all, whole way. I bet she would have been thrilled to see if her, her character being a, a master yeah. of Rey and training her and stuff. That's great. Um, you know, so that's very unfortunate. But they definitely did what they could. They did, yeah. 
Let's talk about the scene where they go to the desert planet and they come across Lando. This is one yeah. of the things where, like, I was like, okay, they're just giving us stuff that we haven't seen yet to, like, make up for their stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with Lando. I, I was, like, wondering, like, where's Lando been all this time? Like, I felt as though he yeah. should have been in The Force Awakens. It was such a random place. Yeah, like, I'm Lando! Be. I'm back! Like, oh, I, I feel like you're just, you're like, this, this primary Easter egg you're to make this up. this celebration of yeah. life. We see Rey healing a creature down below oh yeah the snake thing my immediate reaction was like so i don't care how they interpret the force in these movies but my reaction was like people are really not going to like this they didn't like the force projection stuff in the last jedi Mm. and they're going to like this because oh they're like changing the force and everything i don't have a problem with that like we don't really know a whole lot about the force but something that you mention is like oh she's able to do that because Mm. she's palpatine that's true, and the, the the thing is like, yeah, so pretty much her being that, and that was kind of alluded to in the prequels, was the whole healing aspect and Palpatine learning Bringing back Anakin loved ones in, from the dead. Bringing back loved ones from the dead, uh, saving them from death, all these kind of things, these themes, uh, at least in the third movie, yeah. episode three. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of the other lore that was spawned from those movies and from the original trilogies and stuff like that. So I kind of see where that came from. And it's also just, I think, a natural progression. And and that's the beautiful thing about the Force is that we don't know much about it. And it's just this kind of like vague idea that you can play with these little things and and see what works and see what's fun. Yeah. And you know what I I hate about like those trolls that don't like that aspect of The Last Jedi? It's literally in like the text of the books that you get at like Books a Million. Mm. It is something that is in Star in Wars lore. Text. Yeah. So they don't know their own like Yeah. And they're just getting franchise. pissed off. And that's the thing too is um, you know, this attribute it to something like uh The Last Airbender or, or that that kind of universe, yeah. right? Where they all have these own special powers and stuff and it's and it's set this way maybe in the first couple seasons and then, you know, as it grows, they get new abilities like Water benders can heal. Yeah. Uh, Earth fire... benders can do metal and stuff yeah, like that. Fire build... Yeah, fire Fire benders like... can use uh, electricity. It's like... called progressing your plot. Right, and like, thickening it. Like, if you keep it, like, the same way over time, people are going to get tired of it. Right. Like, I don't understand why Star Wars fans are so limited to the fact that this is just something where you can change people's minds about, like, like you're going to get out of our way, or pushing stuff. Like, I don't understand mm. why it has to be limited to just that. Yeah. Why can't it? Why can't we add more to this? It's just like anything, and but that's a good point too. But uh, that you said that they get tired of stuff because some things people are getting tired of already. Yeah. You see that people, a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, every ship is a Death Star." We're back to the Death Stars at the very. I think that's end. mentioned in the movie, right? Climax. Someone makes that like. Well, they say that every one of them has a weapon. Yeah. A planet killing weapon attached. Pal- okay. Palpatine, I think, says that. So at least it's a little bit meta. Yeah, it's like a, it's a little bit, but it, you know, at the same time, I can see that that is that is also true. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about so the yeah. Zori Bliss scene um, where Poe meets up with yeah. Zori Bliss. Um, I knew that was Carrie Russell as soon as we saw her eyes, because Carrie Russell is the only person I know with those eyes. Yes. Yeah, I was like, that's Carrie Russell. She's very unique. Yeah. You wanna come with me? When the the visor comes up and you see those eyes. Uh, that ended up being one of my favorite scenes to shoot because it's a real moment of connection and you often don't see Poe vulnerable. There's so much I have a problem with this as well. Like I said, I don't give a shit about any of these new characters. I think it really takes away from like Mm -hmm. the story and makes it dumb down. So basically, the first scene that we see is like she really wants to kill Poe Dameron. This isn't a like film that's seen by kids Mm -hmm. where basically she says, I want to splatter your blood all over the snow. So they only see each other for about an hour within the film, and she's already willing to give up this coin that she's been working really hard on. Not even an hour, just like you you interpret it as they've been together for for like an hour. Yeah, but it's only been like 10 minutes, like in in real time of the movie. Right. Yeah, so it's like, here's this coin so you can get out of here. You literally just said that you you hate him Mm -hmm. the first time that you see it, which it's really vague. It's not really explained like what occurred between them, but you understand. What is that deeper? Yeah, it almost seems like spin off books. It almost almost seems like that is the kind of character that they should have introduced in the Last Jedi, and then maybe in this movie we would get more answers like, 
Oh, what is like, the what is the chemistry? What happened? Let's show more about their uh, their history and whatnot. So um, that was a mistake, I think, is honestly. But what else were they gonna do? They're not gonna and they're not gonna throw Rose Deco back in the in the main okay, cast. So they I actually I found out some in information in today. I found out some information today. So okay. Rose, she is unfortunately the Jar Jar Binks of this oh. new sequel trilogy. Yeah. I feel so sorry for that actress because I don't yeah. think she did a terrible job in The Last Jedi. She didn't. It's the character that I really don't like. Right. Um, so I read a post today. She only receives 75 seconds in The Rise of Skywalker in terms of screen time. That's like, well, now she's getting the Captain Phasma treatment. Yeah. I'm so glad they didn't bring fucking Captain Phasma back. I thought that was going to happen a third time. Oh my gosh. I thought it was going to happen a third time where she dies in some BS way and then yeah. comes back. Um. Okay, so let's talk that about That would have been kind of funny though. Let's Shit. talk about the C-3PO scene. Okay, yeah. Okay, this so... Is another um, example of those times they... In the back. trailer, this is hinted to be, like, an emotional, pivotal movement in yeah. this movie where C-3PO is probably gonna die or something like that. Mm -hmm. In the movie, he has some data that he reads on this knife, but he's not, a, he's not allowed to read it in Sith language. His programming, like, doesn't allow it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, from okay, the, so that's from a... the Republic days. Right. That's an interesting plot to add on to this like it, it like is. oh they have to figure out how to get this like Sith language so in the movie they figure out from this adorable little creature Baba Frick is that his ba name Babu yeah Babu Frick they he figures out that in order to basically read this language they have to wipe his memory mm -hmm. in order to read this so they they can wipe away the protocol All right um this is something that they have to think about within the film because they're obviously wiping his memory and he's not going to remember them because yeah. they or any other thing that because at the time we he doesn't yeah. remember as... At the time, they, they don't know if R2-D2 has backup. Right. This is my issue with this. Star Wars is a universe that is centered around technology mm. and things like that. We have starships in this film. Yeah. So, and, uh, why not hyperspace just... hyperspace Yes, jumps. exactly. Why not just save a backup on the spot... Wipe his memory yeah. and put it back in there. You don't have like a super high tech USB fucking exactly. flash drive. You don't you have any of this. Plug in the back end. Like everything is damn R two D two compatible. Yeah. With the little penis attachment that he has. <laughs> I don't know what else. Like it, it, him having like no memory in this film adds nothing to it. Yeah. There's funny jokes about how he says that Baba Frick. Is like his. You're my closest. I've known friend. him for all my life since yesterday. <laughs> that was funny, but it's like that's the only yeah. kind of like humor that we get, and it happens like only that's once. Funny. And then the rest of it was uh, kind of fan service because they're walking through, and they he says, uh, I forget if he says his first line ever or something along the lines like it was one of the earliest things that he had said. Yeah. In the Star Wars story, so that's kind of like a little fan service moment. I do like, remember oh. something like that. I can't remember what the exact line was. And he says was like, like, "This is madness," and you know, because that's the first. Yeah. That's the first thing he says in A New Hope. So I feel like that may have been it, but don't quote me on that. The scene where Rey is battling Kylo Ren. That was cool. I think that was my favorite. On the Death part. Star. Yeah, that was yeah. my favorite. Well, not on the Death Star. Um, the scene where like. She breaks into his quarters and she sees oh, Darth Vader's helmet, yeah, 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 and they're yeah. fighting in two different locations. Yeah, that was that cool. was a perfect example of JJ taking something that Ryan Johnson put in the Last Jedi yeah. and making it better, well, like that, this force projection communication and fighting like from two different locations. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, like, I'm glad that he was able to take something from the Last Jedi and make it like really yeah. like cool to watch. And that is like you know, hey, the fans liked it, so I'm gonna bring it back. And build on that. Yeah. And they started actually damaging the things around them. They were able to pass items through it. Um, there was that really, really cool scene where we're jumping all around here, but Kylo and Ray are having one of those conversations and whatnot. Um, and this is after Kylo had kind of thought things through and gets past a lightsaber from yeah. Ray. And they team up because they did have another fight. Um, on the Death Star wreckage, right, which was pretty cool. Cause, but here's the thing though too. One, one problem is that the whole reason they're there is because there's all these MacGuffins that they're chasing, right? Yeah. Like, okay, they chase the dagger. Okay, have the dagger. Okay, gotta get it transcribed. Okay, get it transcribed. Uh, and then okay, go back. Wait, you pull it out like it's from the freaking Goonies, and it 
it shows the absolute location of something. Okay, you go to that location, and then you find this other, the wayfinder, and yeah. then the wayfinder shows where the location. It feels like a video game. I have a headache. It's yeah, it feels like a. All the places that we're trying to go, and uh, so, anyways, after you get there, um, that's where Dark Ray showed up. Which yeah, hold on I, a second. We should I, have been expecting. Like, let me let me. So basically, I mm-hmm. want to talk about this scene real quick before we get to that scene. Yeah. Because we're we're jumping from scene to scene. The scene where like they're on um in, in his quarters. What I really okay. don't like about the scene as well is Kylo basically tells Rey that she is the granddaughter of Palpatine. This oh. is one of my nitpicks like with the film is that the film just gives us information without any payoff. Yeah. One of the reasons why I liked The Force Awakens is it gives us information but in a cool way. One of the most influential and memorable scenes from The Force Awakens is when we see Rey having this vision when she touches the lightsaber. Mm-hmm. It's this cool little um, nod to like the original trilogy. She's on the Death Star and she gets all this information from the past. It's very vague but we can see from a visual interpretation that this is like something that's leading up to another in the sequels. Yeah. I I really like that scene a lot. Mm-hmm. In this film, there's nothing visual or creative about like the information that they're giving us. It's just they're giving us the information through dialogue. Mm. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, exposition dumps. And they do that. Well, I, I will also disagree because in the scene that you're talking about where they slash... The pedestal that Darth Vader's helmet's on. Yeah. Kylo's like, I know exactly where you are. I'm coming to get you. And then he's like, She's in my quarters. And then they go, Wham! Back to the ship. Yeah. You know what I mean? So th- that's a cool way of being like, Oh, okay. Because of this new implemented force ability that they two share, you know, they can kind of figure out each other's locations and whatnot. Right. And that kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Further the story. Yeah. Uh, by that happening. So that was kind of cool. I just kind of wish that like were. it wasn't him that like told her like you are the granddaughter of Palpatine. It's just it, it just, just feels outright so explained it exactly. Yeah. It's like the text crawl. It's like you are just giving us information to the audience that needs to be built up mm-hmm. and a surprise. Show don't tell. Um. So yeah, let's talk about um Endor. Right? They get oh, yeah. they go to Endor. They go to the uh, Death Star. Um. Oh, yeah. Which and, is on a different moon though. I don't and think this is where Endor, we but... um. Meet Jana. See, I'm having to look at these characters' names Jana. because I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I literally have Black Lady next to Jana's name. <laughs> like, um, so there's really nothing that says this character needs to be in the film. Yeah. She literally just says to like Finn, like, "Oh, I used to be a stormtrooper too." Yeah, she's and like Finn's like, "Oh, female. I used to be a stormtrooper too. We're gonna be buddies." Well, she's like a female Finn. That's what it is. Yeah. It's like a complete mirror where. He, okay, he did the same thing, right? And we saw his whole thing. We don't need to explain that. And then it tells us about her, and then they're now they're both, like, freedom fighters, and they're living out on the... Yeah. With some other team and all this stuff. I do like the, the dialogue that Finn has with her and says, like, oh, I believe, I believe in the Force. Like, you yeah. know, it's something that I didn't used to believe in, and now... Um, I do believe in it. and he's super open with her about it. Okay, it's something I want to acknowledge too. He says that he feels it though. Yeah, he, he feels it too. He can this sense. is something I want to talk about as well. I, I didn't even touch upon this too. In the film, Finn says, has something that he needs to tell Ray. When they're sticking into yeah. the, the quicksand, Ray, I have something to tell you. And you, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, so you when we were driving in the car, you were saying like, oh, maybe he's like, Gonna, was trying to tell her like um, he was uh, force sensitive. And I was like, no, that doesn't seem like something that you would say as you're about to die. But J.J. Abrams actually announced that that was what he was trying to say. And it's yeah. like, that seems so weird. Why would you announce like, as you're about to die, I'm force sensitive, I can make things flow. Like, it just seems like such an <laughs> unnecessary thing to mention as you're about to lose your life. Yeah. I would have much preferred if like well, he stated that like he had feelings for her. I know it seems like really kind of corny, but at the same cool time, how cool of a payoff would it have been to have him show that too? Like, yeah, and maybe make the thing that he's trying to tell her just some corny shit like "I love you," <laughs> you know? Yeah, because I mean, you could tell he has some kind of feelings. Uh, at least in The Force Awakens, maybe. Yeah, you know, build it there up is more some here. corniness that this movie has, and we'll get to it. Yeah. Laughable corniness. 
Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So let's. That's l- way worse. Yeah. That's way worse. I mean, oh, at least they're about to die. And yeah. He says that. Like. Um. So yeah, it's something you wanted to talk about. Sith Ray. I thought that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we should have been expecting yeah. to pay I mean, off it's, exactly it's how it did. It's shown, like, in one of the trailers, it's like, a, oh, I wonder how this is going to be. But it's like, oh, it's just like, uh, it's just a flash or, to the possible future? It's the same thing that happened with Luke at Dagobah when he went into the Oh, yeah, and he, like, slashes and he, Vader and he sees Vader. his face. Yeah, so, like, yeah, cool little nod to, like, the original trilogy for sure. Yeah. Um, the scene where she's battling Kylo on top of the Death Star and... Leia is trying to use the Force to communicate with him one last time. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really well done, actually. Um, yeah. For what they were given in the situation that was there, mm-hmm. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, and that was the thing, too, is you could tell, like, they kind of uh, did this... It was like a ceremonial kind of thing. It yeah. was like they almost knew that, okay, this is the moment that, you know, she would die yeah. like even in the star wars universe like they kind of knew so they're like okay we're gonna lay her on this nice bed and kind of have like this blanket and stuff over her and uh, i think that that's me explaining it for the star wars universe for us we know that carrie fisher probably wasn't able to film that yeah. bit um but there was that bit of adr that they're able to to use to pull mm-hmm. off the scene uh it gets kylo to stop attacking ray Ray stabs him. Savage, oh yeah! You know, after he kind of holds up for a second, he's yeah. like, Ugh. and that's when another uh, heal is brought forward. Ray heals him. Yeah, and that was that was nice. I whenever I was when you see the first heal, you're like, oh, that's new, and then you see that I don't give a hit. I don't I don't care that you've been on the enemy side. You've been trying to kill me. Yeah. and track me down. You don't deserve to die. It was com- it was almost like this realization like even though i have like this gift from this emperor i could still use it for good but then there's a scene where like she needs to leave and she basically wants to isolate herself like luke did in the last jedi yeah um and then we have the scene with um you know han solo which i liked um and there was a little bit of interpretation that we wanted to talk about with that it's like is he actually there Mm -hmm. or is this just like his mind settling into the fact that he just needs to move well, on from his father's death. He actually, uh, Han actually says that. Uh, he says that he's a uh, memory. Yeah. He, he's, and that's, so it's and not I a think, force ghost. I, right. And I think that's why it kind of plays back similarly to the, how the Force Awaken happens because that was yeah. like his last memory of his dad. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the same beats kind of were hit. Um, and what I originally think, this is my theory, is that they wanted, originally that was going to be Carrie Fisher force projecting yeah. to actually stop him and talk to him and uh, we even talked about that in brainstorm like oh let's hope they have they i hope they have some kind of footage of her talking to kylo because that kind of face-to-face yeah. interaction would be a big scene um especially considering the last film where it was like seemingly kylo thinks he freaking killed leia i guess until the end oh yeah and uh, does he even know that she's still alive? That's a or? good point. It's like, yeah, so are you just... Maybe that's are, why it's like shook him so like, much. Like, are you just shook because she's dead now and you thought she was dead this entire time and you have to... Uh, yeah, it's like, that's that's really interesting. That's I did like not a, even think of that. That's like a left to interpretation kind yeah. of thing. So we have the scene where uh, Ray sees Luke as a forest ghost, which makes sense. Right. He died. Yeah. He was a Jedi. Now he turned in. He came one with the force. Yeah, he um, he's coming back. I like this scene. Here's the thing. Um, so, <laughs> like, so I uh, basically like this movie has been them trying to fix the mistakes of the Last Jedi. Yeah. And then we have this scene where Luke is like, "I was wrong to think that I had to be on this island. I was in fear." And like, you know, that's that's cool. Like, you know, the entire like Star Wars series has been about how fear turns those of the light into dark. So we have him isolating himself so he doesn't have to confront that. And Mm. I actually like that little nod. Um, What I thought was so hilarious, dude, was we have the scene where he makes the X-Wing rise for Rey and Rey's Mm. piloting it. I thought that was something that we were going to get in The Last Jedi. Like how if he leaves the planet, he can make the, the ship rise because... 
it felt like that should have been like it and then they went with this force projection stuff because we have master yoda there mm -hmm. and it would have been like um a shot very similar to that of empire strikes back yeah and it's like oh well we didn't use this shot in the last jedi let's just do it in the rise of skywalker so ray can like leave and stuff super cool yeah then she goes to confront palpatine um and then there's like this battle where there's a ton of imperial ships oh yeah a ton um and then all cgi of a sudden, bad guy army exactly and then lando all of a sudden this one guy <laughs> gets Brings all the, the ships in the entire star wars universe even from the the freaking separatists there was a separatist <laughs> ship that anakin he can blow up saying, this is intense. <laughs> One of those <laughs> in the background of that shot, which was a cool ass shot, by the way, where he's like, and the fucking thing flies. You know what I'm talking about. Unbelievable. <laughs> like, there's things that I do like about Lando in this movie. Like when Lando's like talking, to, I think it was either Finn or Poe, um, how he's talking about like, they're asking him, how, how did you like do this originally? Like, how did you stop the empire? We had and each other. yeah, exactly. That was a great thing to add, like Lando to this movie. Like that yeah. that dialogue alone is like that's the reason why he's here. Everything else, it just feels like it's for fan service and to you know get multiple different ships that aren't yeah. plausible. Like, yeah, it's just. Oh my god, well, this I mean, is what I'm talking about. That. It's fun, but it's like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Although, I, I, we have to acknowledge, we are talking about Star Wars. That's why this movie kind of passes in some sense, because we're talking about a movie from the 70s about, like, people with laser swords talking to tall, bear-looking creatures, <laughs> and people are asking for logic. Dogman. Like, yes, logically, it doesn't make sense, but I'm trying to have fun. <laughs> I'm trying to have fun. That's my... This is my, my sweet. This, this is fine. This is mine. <laughs> this is fun. Um, <laughs> Michael, we're reaching the scene in question that we have to talk about. The climax. The climax, where Ray faces Palpatine. Oh, and well, the shitstorm. It's not just her. Like because and we, Kylo. We touched about this a little bit ago. The shitstorm. Wait, 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 wait. We're forgetting. We're forgetting about something. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Fucking Knights of Ren were oh, goddamn yeah. glorified punching yeah. bags, pretty much. Oh, yeah. They were there for Kylo to rise up and become. You know, I'm glad a good that they guy. were. I, I'm glad that they were in this movie. I still don't know a damn thing about them. Were they? Who the hell were, were they? they in this movie? <laughs> Who the hell? Yeah, like, there's like two scenes where one of them they're just looking like badasses, and then the second one they all surround Kylo. And it's like, oh yeah, give me your fucking lunch money, bitch. And then Kylo's like, hey Ray, I need that lightsaber real quick. And she's like, oh okay, here you go. Mew 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 mew, and fucks him up. And that was like their whole purpose, I guess. Which I, is very unfortunate because I feel like that's something that goes back to Last Jedi, where it's like they could have been implemented more yeah. there. And then that's where that's one of my nitpicks for like Last Jedi. Or I'm sorry, I'm I'm just gonna say negatives. Where the was the saga. Knights of Ren? The whole yeah. saga. Now. That's my like thing for the Last Jedi is like there was stuff that was like showcased in the Force Awakens, yeah. and they weren't in Last Jedi. And I thought that was like J.J. Abrams like Ryan, why didn't you use the Knights of Ren? And that's him using the Knights of Ren yeah. in Rise of Skywalker. I do Squeeze feel like in, though. it's like I, I do like I wonder what JJ has to say about Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Like I, I wonder that. like because you can tell like there are some add-ons to this scene where JJ's like, yeah, he messed it up. Like he, yeah. he ignored my story. There's even visual representation of him trying to fix The Last Jedi, where we have the scene where Kylo is just putting together his helmet. Oh, yeah. That is a visual representation of what this movie is. Is like fixing something rebuilding that messed up a first movie in a trilogy yeah like i would i would agree with that there is some uh some other things but then again and it it kind of builds like that theme of like take the risks but then also don't take the risks and kind of make these decisions and then don't make them you're spearheading this entire saga yeah and the end of it more importantly uh, you know, because Disney was just like, oh, we own Star Wars now. Yeah. Let's add to the main song. Like, 
they what they should have done is they think they should just stuck to the spinoffs and the older public and other things that they're kind of trying to get into and yeah. doing all that stuff, not touching the main you know, saga. I agree. I agree. Um, I'll get into that later, but I, I do feel as though they should have just made their own trilogy, which they are going to later on, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Let's talk about the ending of this. So I like the lightsabers. I like how Luke, like, I like how there's Luke's lightsaber, and I like how there's Leia's lightsaber, and they're both using these lightsabers to indicate that these are people that affected their lives. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. Um, using their masters. Yeah, and the, sabers, the part much. where like Rey is communicating with like the other Jedi's. Yeah, we heard voices that we've known throughout the series, and we heard like Qui Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson. I was like, yeah. this is cool. Even like like people like Ahsoka, like yeah, really low key uh, Jedi voices being heard, and people that maybe only had like one line, like yeah. Shock, Shock T, and like these other. Uh, characters and you're like, wow, that's very unexpected. And then you have Samuel L. Jackson as well. Like, that's one of the takeaways from this movie. I feel is like, you know, that's kind of like when I realized, like, you know, like this movie has a lot of nitpicks, but this is a movie that's celebrating a franchise that we've all grown up on, mm -hmm. and you know, this has affected our lives. Even though the prequels were bad, we still really enjoyed them as a kid, yeah. and kids are still enjoying this film. Like, this is not the Phantom Menace. This film has a very close score to The Phantom Menace, but this is not The Phantom Menace. I'm still able to watch this film and, you know, have some entertainment value from it. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the takeaways that I felt, like, when I was watching this scene. I was like, you know what? This is Star Wars. Like, you know, this is not something that needs to be really yeah. dissected or anything. This is a fantasy film that... And I think yeah. it's one of the unintentional things to take away from the film is this is just a movie mm, like that's true and that's the thing too is that this whole saga and the movies separately have had the fans blow them way yeah. out of proportion because we have all these crazy expectations and it's like oh a new trilogy it's disney they're gonna have these crazy budgets and make awesome stuff and blah 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 and so we're wanted to be everything that we wanted to be but it's never going to be what it was yeah exactly i agree and like um did this movie kill star wars no but you know what killed me <laughs> yeah. the kiss between ray and kylo raylo i shipped them <laughs> Best scene ever, Michael. Like, Best scene ever. Do you remember in the theater, I was sitting there next to him, and they were having like this little buddy-buddy moment, yeah. and they are being all cute, and I'm like, no kids. I fucking yeah, hate you that Yeah, you the were theater. like making a joke. Yeah, and I was And then they did. Joke. Everyone started laughing. <laughs> Everyone in the- Everyone started laughing. Every person in our theater was laughing. They said, <laughs> and they're like, legitimately. That was the biggest laugh out of the whole theater I throughout the entire I, movie. I leaned over to you. I posted this on Twitter, but I had this joke on the spot, and I felt so proud of it. When your platonic female friend kisses you all of a sudden, and then you ghost her. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit! Like, this scene, this is mean gold. Yeah. This is like... Unintentional comedy. It was like, because oh that my was the god! Because they kiss, and then immediately after, he's like, "All right, I'm gonna die now," <laughs> and just disappears into the like, course. This is Disney. Like the, the fans, like if ever since Disney bought out Star Wars, they've been like wondering, like, oh, like what scenes are gonna be Disney and everything. This is the most Disney scene yeah. out of this trilogy. Is like the good girl and bad guy kissing each other like i don't know what it is but like, like kissing in star wars movies now it just feels so disney han solo this is gonna sound really weird but one of my like negatives for han solo was that there were just so many kissing scenes and i'm like what is this why is this a romance this should be a star wars film yeah. This is what is happening this is about swashbuckling space pirates not about kissing <clears throat> uh yeah I definitely feel that way. 
And here's the thing. I feel like the scene would have had just some, as much impact if they didn't kiss and he just smiled because that was the first time that uh, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren had smiled in the new trilogy. And throughout really all now? of them. Yeah, that was oh, the first okay. time he smiled. So that was like, you know, that's I get what I get, I get what they were going for. Yeah. She wasn't falling in love with Kylo Ren. She was falling in love with Ben Solo because... You know, she looked at Han Solo as a father, which that's weird. She's that's eight. weird. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you look at Han Solo as a father and you want to date his son, isn't that unconnected incest? I mean, it's I not incest. Go, I wouldn't go that But it's far. weird. That's like, well, I mean, that's weird. They always say girls date their dads nowadays. That's like a thing. They like look for their, you know. It's like a psychology thing. <laughs> Look it up. Okay, Freud. So, they magically Stephen defeat Freud. the First Order, or the Final Order. Is that what they're called? Yeah, they're called the Final the Order. The Final Order. Now. Yep. And they have a celebration. The Chewie, red suits that Chewie they used finally in gets, one shot. Chewie finally gets a medal. That's, yeah, that was... That was cool. I was like, oh, that's cute. That was, yeah. And yeah. I and a lot of people are like, oh, they're really, they're literally just putting memes in Star Wars. Well, duh. Didn't... I think that was a good thing. Yeah, they, like they like acknowledged something. Yeah, that, the that means that they are looking into like what we're saying yeah. about like the original trilogy. So I, yeah. I really like that. And we're not saying that that was a huge thing. Like we, he needs a fucking medal. But we thought, yeah. it was, we thought it was cute. Yeah. And then uh, we see Lando talking to Jana, and yeah. Jana doesn't really know who she is. And Lando's like, let's find out. Let's find out. What, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Out. Like maybe the next uh, trilogy is gonna be about her and her f- lineage. Y- you know what I? You know what I thought was really uh, the, the takeaway from this film. So we we find out that Palpatine had children, and I was talking to you yeah. in the car. I was like, what if there was a prequel trilogy to the sequel trilogy, or maybe just like a series or one spinoff movie that explains these like um, uh, children running away from their father Palpatine or uh, was it the dad that had the, the it was related or yeah, was it the mother Palpatine's son son so it was Palpatine's son I'd be kind of interested to see like a series or a spinoff movie based on Palpatine's son and then learning more a little bit about Rey's yeah, lineage that'd be kind of interesting he did say that where he was kind of like a the very beginning of uh, like and that, that could be a cool thing because Star Wars movies always kind of start in the middle of this big action yeah. thing so maybe like it just starts out and they're on the run they're running away oh, yeah. from Palpatine and or uh, from just the just the Empire in general um, I think that would be a really cool yeah. like on the run thing kind of show yeah and then we see uh, Rey go to Tatooine to bury the lightsabers um, and she yeah. has her own lightsaber this was some controversy between you and I. Was it green or was it yellow? I'm colorblind. But... It was it was uh, like a gold. It was like a yellow gold. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to represent so because they've come up with all these different uh, purposes and and the, of the colors and stuff like yeah. that. So yellow is for like a sentinel, which are uh, there to protect like Jedi texts, Jedi knowledge oh, and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, so pretty much what they're saying is like she's the protector of the Jedi and then Yeah, the, she's like the, the light she's side. literally the last Jedi until these kids like from the last Jedi uh, grow and, up yeah. and figure out their Um, you know, abilities. I I think a lot of people have been neutral about this part of the film, but I actually find it kind of decent and somewhat beautiful. This entire trilogy has been about this person living mm-hmm. out in the desert. She has no idea who she is. Um, she's trying to find herself, and then the end of this film, she finally defines herself, she finds herself, and she calls herself Rey Skywalker. Now, I, I know some people have been a little bit neutral about that, but I was like, that's cool. That means yeah. that you are comfortable with who you are, you know who you are, you don't need like to know who your parents are to define who you are. Yeah. Like, if you want to be a Skywalker, like, go right ahead. Yeah. And I that, feel like you've earned that title. The whole idea that people were tying to that they liked about The Last Jedi so much about her not being anyone, being a nobody, was that, oh, anyone can be uh, a Force sensitive or a Jedi, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of the idea behind her taking on the Skywalker name, too, though, right? Like, Skywalker, in at least in my idea of. A Jedi is kind of like secondhand to Jedi. You yeah, know what I mean, it starts off. I mean, we gotta be honest. The last two trilogies, we've only seen 
the very, very remnants of any Jedi. It's mainly been about the training of it's Jedi training for the Skywalker family. Yeah. So her saying that is that's how I perceive it. It's just kind of like a yeah another way of saying that. And you know, honestly, like I was saying this like in the middle of the review, but I, I have been kind of saving it for like this end of this film. I think it's safe to say that we are done with the Skywalker saga. This is the end of the Skywalker saga, which I hate how this has been advertised as that because it technically ended with the Return of the Jedi, but yeah. this is a cool little add-on DLC, whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah. it. This is a, that's the greatest way to interpret the series, DLC. DLC. Um, <laughs> I don't think Star Wars is done necessarily. I think it's just the Skywalker saga and the original trilogy that yeah. I think we just need to be done with. If the properties that we've seen throughout this year, like The Mandalorian and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, that video game was great. I'm still playing it. I absolutely loved it, mm -hmm. or loving it. Um, we don't need, like, lineage to define that we like Star Wars. Like, no. there's so much that you can do with this broad universe yeah. that, like, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is proof. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, is if it's in a galaxy far, far away go to the next galaxy over or will, will there still be lightsabers <laughs> i still want there to be lightsabers well i mean i want lightsabers so listen i apologize for that <laughs> i still like star wars this film has a shit ton of nitpicks i don't care about the new characters it's still entertaining though yeah it has a good message in terms of what it means to be a star wars fan and it's just a fun film. Yeah. I'm looking at this from the perspective of like kids watching a cool fantasy Star Wars film and I just it's fine. Yeah. It's all good. Ultimately, uh I think you know all the characters did great. All the all the all the actors. Uh John Boyega, he's probably well, him and Poe are my favorites. Uh, new characters, at least. I'm so I sad still... they didn't have a gay relationship. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. John... Tumblr, stop ruining our lives. Yeah, it wasn't. I didn't feel that sexual tension ever, but people were like, people like be ballsy, in, like, be ballsy. In the Force Awakens, like... they saw like him bite his lip. I'm like, that's. I mean, he could have just been like itching a zit yeah. on his lip. That's not that really a sexual like... thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's a zit. He's got some. You gotta get some chapstick. So his like, lips are chapped or something. Yeah. It's what you make or this series conversation. Yeah, um, like I so this this is what I will say, and we'll leave it at this. Star Wars isn't a bad series. It has had some flops. Yeah, I will say what's worse though, uh, the community. The Star Wars community mm. is the worst. Um, pleasing a Star Wars fan is virtually impossible yeah. nowadays. It's almost, well, because here's the thing, is the diehard, super, super diehard fans are, uh, and, and that aren't willing for change. Yeah. Because I'd say that I'm a pretty diehard fan. I mean, I've got yeah. two lightsabers, I've seen all the movies, been watching them since I was like five or six mm. years old. That makes you a fan. Have one or two lightsabers. No, but there's all these, there's <laughs> all these things, different things, good merchandise, I've supported them all. I've watched every Star Wars thing besides uh, Solo. And yeah. that was, kind of one way of me talking with my wallet in a way but it was just you know yeah one ticket so what's it matter well, regardless yeah you know it just depends on the person and there's a lot of people that are, are you mentioning like you purchasing this stuff because of your love for star is that what you're trying one, to what i'm saying is that the there are there are diehard fans that are still going to like and be okay with the new trilogy yeah but there are a lot of other diehard fans because and here because this is what I'm trying to say is that the new trilogy I'd say is made for children and the general audiences. Yeah, because that is a very true statement. Because it's actually. fun, and that's the thing is that's what Disney does, and uh, <clears throat> the diehard fans that aren't good with maybe people don't like change, maybe they don't like the new characters, they don't like Disney. There's the list goes on for what makes people not like these movies, um, but I don't know. I'd still say it was. Uh, I still want to go to the parks. 
Yeah, I still want to go. Yeah, to the parks. I still want to still... go to the parks. I don't. I I don't hate Star Wars because of this film. If if anything, I think it makes me appreciate Star Wars a little bit more and why we like Star Wars yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, it was good. I'll. I've bought all the movies thus far. I'm gonna get it on Blu-ray for sure. Yeah. yeah. I like the message that the movie has, especially the ending. We aren't really acknowledging that this was a hard film for J.J. Abrams to make. Yeah, this is this had to have been the fucking worst experience. Trying Usually, to get when this like thing an out. actress or someone dies, they just leave a franchise. Yeah, well, because it's not even that. Yeah. That the that we had Carrie Fisher's death. You've got everybody and their mom pissed off about the Last Jedi. Solo didn't sell well, so Disney's like. Yeah. We're about to lose. We insert that cat meme, <laughs> the white cat. It's yeah. on the background. He's like, because <laughs> Disney, I'm sure, was like, this is a Hail Mary. Yeah. And I think um, they did an, a, a pretty good job at, at bringing it together, uh, kind of tying it up. The one nitpick I have about the last scene where they're okay. all talking to her, uh, I just wish either they would have showed up as Force Ghosts or Hayden Christensen would have showed up. As okay. a force goes. Yeah. Just to kind of make that parallel. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying because it would have been a good send off in terms of like the Skywalker saga. Yeah, and, like, like, visually, that's right? But my counter argument is like we see these two people that had an influence on her life, and you know, she hasn't really had parents throughout this entire trilogy. Mm. And that's the point of that shot is like, oh, like these are people that have helped me grow as a person. Oh, Leia. That's true. And Luke. Oh well, yeah, yeah, and, that, yeah. and I get that. Like maybe they show up, you know, at the very ending. Yeah, and, and like maybe as she like during like, the climax goes away, they see all these ghosts appear. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. That's not huge. It's not yeah. huge, but I definitely thought it would be a cool visual. Yeah, and uh, way to kind of visually show that. Yeah, but overall, it's good. It was good. It was good. It was good. Just, just good. It was just good. Just it was not amazing. Just good. It was just good. It was fine. It was, it was, it was fine. fine. It was fine. It was. I hate this it movie so much!